guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> Thank you so much guys for tuning in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time that you get to listen to this. Please remember to share this message with as many people as you can because you just never know who needs to hear this. So today we'll be continuing on with the last part of Numbers chapter 16. Yesterday, we read the story about the three guys who rebelled against Moses and Aaron and we stopped at the part where the earth opened and they swallowed them together with their families. I know I'm sounding dramatic, but that is exactly what happened, guys. So I'm going to be continuing from that. So let's just do that. I'm just going to be reading actually just that verse where the earth swallowed them so that we at least have some sort of continuity. And this is what it says. The world, the words were hardly out of Moses' mouth. When the earth split open, earth opened its mouth and in one gulp swallowed them down, the men and their families, and all the human beings connected with Korah, along with everything they owned. And that was the end of them. They were pitched alive into Sheol, and the earth closed up over them, and that was the last the community had of them. So that's, guys, that's how Korah, Dathan, and Abiram um, met their maker. (laughs) <laughs> rather that's how they died and that was the end of them so verse 34 at the sound of the at the sound of their cries everybody ran for dear lives shouting we are about to be swallowed up alive <laughs> then god sent a lightning and the fire cremated 250 men who were offering the incense guys these 250 men were the guys that had joined Korah. they were the gang that had joined Korah, and there were 250 council leaders that had actually joined Korah in this um rebellion and so they were standing over there because see god had told them to just come now with their incense and let's see uh who who god will choose so they were over there standing there with their two incense and then uh, lightning came and they cremated cremated them so god spoke to moses and told him Tell Eliza, son of Aaron the priest, to gather up the censers from the smoldering cedars and scatter the coal a distance, the coals a distance away from these censers, for these censers have become holy. Take the censers of the men who have sinned and are now dead and hammer them into thin sheets of covering the altar. They have been offered to God and are holy to God. Let them serve as a sign to Israel, evidence of what happened this day. So Eliza gathered all the bronze censers that belonged to those who had been burned up and had them hammered flat and used to overlay used them to overlay the altar, just as God had instructed him by Moses. This was to serve as a sign to Israel that only descendants of Aaron were allowed to burn incense before God. Anyone else trying it would end up like Korah and his gang. So God, what God is saying. Now, because the 250 men have been cremated and over there, now they're just looking black. And their two censors are there because they're bronze. So I'm imagining it's black and then 250 bronze censors just like remaining on the ground. So God was like, collect all those censors, hammer them flat and use them to to overlay the altar. As a sign to just remind people that only Aaron was allowed to burn incense. Verse 41. Grumbling broke out the next day in the community of Israel. Grumbling against Moses and Aaron. Like these guys are still going to grumble. Hey, more than I'm just like, guys, Israelites, me, I would be somewhere scared in a corner of a tent, just as silent as I don't know what is as silent as a what? I would be that silent. <laughs> I would not even be saying a thing. After people have been cremated and others have been swallowed by uh, I mean, I'm not going to be saying anything. But these Israelites. Who are they? They are going to grumble. They are going to grumble against Moses and Aaron again. And they are saying, you have killed God's people. But it so happened <laughs> at, that when the community got together against Moses and Aaron, they looked over the tent of the meeting and they saw the cloud, the glory of God for all to see. So Moses and Aaron stood at the front of the tent of the meeting and God spoke to the Moses and said, back away from this congregation so I can do away with them this very minute. But Moses and Aaron, as it was their doing to just intercede for these people, they threw themselves face down on the ground and Moses said to Aaron, 
take your censers and fill it with incense along with fire from the altar get to the congregation as fast as you can make atonement for them because anger is pouring out from god and the plague has started so aaron grabbed the censers as directed by moses and ran into the midst of the congregation the plague had already begun he put burning incense into the censer and atoned for the people he stood there between the living and the dead and he stopped the plague unfortunately 14000 700 people died from the plague, not counting those guys that had died in the affair of Korah. Aaron, Aaron then went back to join Moses at the entrance of the tent of the meeting because the plague had stopped. So even, I mean, when God is saying, back up from, back up from these guys, I want to finish them. Like he said that and the plague started immediately. So if Aaron did not was not like quick to go and actually atone for the guys, they would have all, like all Israelites would have died. But Aaron was like, Moses was like, hey, he told Aaron, if you go, take the census and go atone for these guys before God finishes them because the plague has already started. Unfortunately, by the time the atonement, the, the time the plague was stopping or the, by the time Aaron was finishing to atone for the guys, 14,700 guys had died, which is very, very sad. So in this last part of the chapter, we see Israelites grumbling and God's anger burning out which is a clear indication that God also detests grumbling. Yesterday, we saw that God detests rebellion and he detests insubordination. So in this verse, in this last part, we are saying that he hates grumbling. In other versions, they call it um, complaining or they call it murmuring. So what is grumbling? According to the dictionary, it is the action or fact of complaining in a bad-tempered way. Or expressing a complaint in a bad-tempered way. <clears throat> you see, the Bible says that from the abundance of our, one's heart, the mouth speaketh. So, what comes out of our mouths is very telling. That is why you can learn a lot about a person by the words they use. Our speech show if we trust the Lord or not, if we fear the Lord or not. And one of the first symptoms of drifting from the fear of God is grumbling and complaining. And unfortunately, that was the greatest sin that the Israelites committed. It was they were the most it was the most consistent sin that they had while in the wilderness. And in fact, it was their complaining that made this 11-day trip last 40 days. It would have taken the Israelites exactly 11 days from the foot of Mount Sinai to the promised land but because of complaining and grumbling it took them 40 years so to help us understand why god hates uh complaining i'm just going to share three reasons why he hates complaining and grumbling number one complaining poisons our attitude complaining poisons our attitude and it turns it negative you see most of the time people who complain I used to be one of these people. I used to really complain. Oh, the Lord has helped me. They wear the, <laughs> the complaining on their, on their expression. I mean, they're angry, they're unsatisfied. And unfortunately, the more people complain or the more we complain, the darker we see the world. And the darker we see the world, the more we complain. And it's just like a downward spiral that never bears anything good. So number one, complaining poisons our attitude. Number two, complaining infects the attitude of others. Complaining is contagious. So when we share our negative discontent, as we have seen happen in this and other previous chapters, it can have us the same negative effect on someone else's attitude, especially if they are spiritually or emotionally weak. So God despises it because it doesn't just affect the complainer, but it infects other people who are now just over there minding their own business. Now you've come and started complaining and you're infecting God's people with your complaining. So God is like, ah, I don't like complaining. So that's number two. Complaining infects the attitude of others. Number three, complaining implies that we don't trust God. You see, complaining is the exact opposite of trusting God and being thankful. It is indirectly communicating to the Lord you know what, God? I don't like what you're doing in my life. And if I were you, I would do it differently. Complaining is nothing more than a manifestation of insubordination against 
Lord's authority. Complaining, even in difficult circumstances, says that we don't trust God. Because if we trusted God, we would present our request to him. We would pray about all that we need because he's made allowance for us to do this, to present all our needs. He says, pray about everything that you need and thank me for everything that you have. And then the peace of God shall come and take that over your emotions and your thoughts. So he's given us a space for us to go and say, Lord, we need this is what is happening to me and this is what I need. And then after that, we would just trust that he will come through for us because he has com- promised in his word so we wouldn't complain we would just present our, our request and trust him and sadly grumbling can keep us from the purposes of god for our lives it makes us deaf to his voice and fixes our eyes on the difficult situations that we face instead of resting on the fact that we know God's unmatched capacity to perform and his unconditional undying love for us. My challenge for us, let us not make an 11-day trip last 40 years. Because the longer we remain in this negative, complaining and grumbling attitude, the longer we remain in the wilderness or in our challenges. This is your girl Wakeji Kamore and this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore.